After several days of rising tension in our relations with Argentina, it became clear that an armed country's armed forces attacked the Falkland and the Islands yes government of the island and established and military control, control of the islands. My name's Sarah Halford. Forty years ago, I was born in the Falkland Islands in Stanley. Three months later, the Argentines invaded the Falklands. The motivation for me to join the army was all of the history from the Falklands. So growing up all the way through school, uh, we learned about the Falklands War um, and the stories that we heard and listened to as well by family. Even now, 40 years on, I still hear new stories all the time. And that was a massive drive for me to join. So I, and I knew from a young age as well, that, that was the path I wanted to take, probably back from the age of 10. We know from a young age again what the sacrifices were from the soldiers that liberated us. So for me, that was something that I could then give back, was to join the military then as well. Even though there was an immense amount of freedom, there was obviously restrictions there as well. Um, so growing up in Stanley, there was a lot of minefields around there, um, inclusive of one of our fence lines for where I where I lived was a minefield fence. So we were educated from a very young age about what the dangers were with minefields and beaches as well. I've served now for 22 years. Um, and it was in my mindset when I left to join the army as well, that wanting to give something back, I did. So for me, I've served 20 out of 22 of my years so far with 16 Air Assault Brigade. Um, I've served with 16 Medical Regiment where I currently am as well from private soldier all the way up to RSM. And I've also done two of my operational tours of Iraq as a company medic with two para on the ground with them. So we're currently at the Airborne Assault Museum in Duxford. Um, a group of young paratroopers and myself come to see the museum itself, um, predominantly the Falkland Island side of it, um, Operation Corporate. Um, the kit and equipment that the, that the men had during the conflict um, what they had to endure with that kit and equipment as well and see where we are now, 40 years on, and the differences and the lessons that were learnt during that period as well and that what we've taken forward. So as a serving soldier with the experience that I've got now, what I would say to veterans is a lot of changes. It's expected, it's 40 years, but our camaraderie is exactly the same as what they would have had 40 years ago as well. So, and we've learnt a lot. We've learned a lot from individuals like Clive and the veterans from 1982. I'm Clive Smith. I was uh, part of two power battle group in the Falklands and uh, I was with two power, two power for three years. I was within, working in the signal platoon. I was the CO's operator for most of it. I wasn't with the C uh, Colonel Jones uh, when he was shot. I was in tactical headquarters. But from then on, I moved uh, back to work with Colonel Chandler when he took over. Which battles I was in, I was uh, in Goose Green, but not fully involved at the front. I was with TAC headquarters, but I was again moved, and then I was in Wireless Ridge for the whole of the Wireless Ridge battle. One major memory, I think the bleakness of the countryside, the, the whole country, no trees, just continuous, when we were there, wind and rain and no shelter. So a really bleak place to be. Well, we didn't actually meet any local people initially. We went up Sussex Mountain and then uh, off to Goose Green. So the first time I had any interaction was at Goose Green. And unbelievably, these people welcomed us into their houses, uh, gave us warm, dry clothing. So they had you know, just a pair of dry socks was heaven. Uh, use their bath, have a, have a wash and a bath and fed us uh, at the same time and they gave us what they called 365 which was they called uh, lamb stew because that's all they ate. So a big pot of stew, a bath and some warm clothes and very very friendly and welcoming. I think it's, it's fantastic her story. I mean I had a quick chat with her earlier on. Uh, it's hard to believe that she was born at that sort of time when she was telling me how she was brought up living with minefields and ammunition that you would find left, right and centre. Um, and she had this overwhelming sort of urge to join the British Army and do it. And I think that's a fantastic story. They'll never be forgotten. What they've done for us as a community and a small, and a small community, 
will be forever grateful.